Good morning, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. On Monday, November 27th, at noon, Mountain Time, 2017, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update, monitoring uh, a Goong volcano since last night. I was trying to show you a video. I thought I had seen it erupting last night, and in fact, I had. The eruption has continued, and it is increasing. The airport has canceled all flights, and currently Mount Agung is spewing ash over nine kilometers into the air. This is cooling the planet as we speak, and this is just the beginning of eruptions that are going to intensify and overlap each other. So just look at the amount of particulates being ejected into the stratosphere here. Now, a lot of the eruptions that have been happening over the past few months have been extremely minor. Uh, and really are going to have limited effect on cooling on our planet. And this is the first, really, other than what seems to be Popo is awakening in slightly significant amounts. Those Popo eruptions pale in comparison to what's happening right here. One second of this eruption equals all the Popo eruptions that have happened in the last few days. Just look at the magnitude of a material shooting and at the speed it's shooting into the stratosphere. Look at that amount of a material. And now this is from yesterday. This footage. Uh, a volcano discovery. The, the volcano continued to erupt more violently overnight. And that's what I was trying to show you. I actually had this footage, but I lost it. I apologize. And there they're not even showing the video. They're just giving you a, a screen capture. So when I was doing the update last night, a gun was re-erupting violently. Now, the seismicity has been reduced. So if we come over here to the graphs, let me explain what happens. This is the number of earthquakes. Over 800 were coming in when the first scares came in. I predicted the eruption around the 25th. I got a lot of flack as it fell off and people moved back to the island. This is a typical scenario of a violent phreatic volcano. The earthquakes crack the subsurface as the magma fills the chamber, and then the cracks, they were reporting on cracks in Agung, and everyone was saying, oh, it's bull. The cracks start to relieve the pressure, and then the eruption begins. And here you can see the uptick spike in the seismicity, just minor, but that's denoting the eruptive activity that's happening now. That's a heads up there. This is going to continue to erupt until it relieves all that pressure. The pressure that filled the magma chamber over a period of weeks with thousands of earthquakes. So this is a large amount of magma pressure and particulates and aerosols that need to be ejected into the stratosphere to relieve the pressure. And now this is an ongoing eruption. It's hard to predict if it's going to continue to fill the magma chamber and it's going to be a long duration eruption. But what we do know is that these eruptions have taken place on high cosmic ray flux periods. It's provable. There was a major eruption in 1808, which is in the complete downward position of cycle 5, right here where I'm pointing to it, which is right where we are on cycle 24. There was a major eruption in 1821, right here at the bottom of cycle 6, the same place it erupted in the bottom of cycle 5, during very high cosmic ray flux. It erupted again in 1843 on the downward arm of cycle 8. It erupted in 1963 and 64, right here on the downward high cosmic ray flux arm of cycle 19. And it is now erupting in the same place it has historically erupted time and time again. And this is clear evidence and proof that you can predict phreatic volcanic eruptions based on cosmic ray flux. You can't say which volcano is going to erupt, but if they show particular seismic footprints, you can better, you could probably guess that they're about to blow. So we have the seismic footprint of a stratocone volcano, namely Agung, that happens prior to the phreatic eruption. And now we have a model, and this should be repeated as we descend into the grand solar minimum. So that's a heads up. 
The eruption has been gradually intensifying since yesterday. Near continuous explosions generated an eruption column that is now rising approximately 30,000 foot, 9 kilometers in altitude, with the ash plume spreading east and south and forcing the closure of valleys in Lambux Airport. More evacuations have been ordered in the area around the volcano. And light to moderate ash falls occurring in downwind areas where people are advised to wear protective masks. P PVMBG has raised the alert level to AWAS 4 on 1 to 4. That's the highest level. The exclusion zone is 8 to 10 kilometers wide. The strong incandescence visible at the base confirms the eruption is now in its magmatic stage. No significant earthquake activity is taking place as we discussed. As the conduit is now open, the erupting magma does no longer need to break its path through the rock layers inside the volcano. I'll leave you links to this uh, aerial footage. There's tons of articles you can read. Here are the ones coming out today. 100,000 are being evacuated as the volcano is eruption is intensifying. Let's see if we can get a quick video here. There's the the ash flow again. You can see the amount of material. This is yesterday. It's it's increased. And here I'll leave you this article here. Mount Agung, 100,000 told to evacuate as uh, Bali volcano spews huge ash clouds. So guys, it's a heads up. This volcano is peaking right now. Status. The eruption is gradually intensifying since yesterday. Near continuous explosions generated at the eruption column. It is now raising 30,000 feet. That is high up. The cooling is beginning. Be safe, everybody. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't.